Hey everyone, welcome to the video. This is part two of the trapping rainwater problem. In this video, I'm going to quickly revisit the solution from part one. I'll do this for two reasons. One is because I want to fix a typo or a mistake in the algorithm. And two, I want to rewrite the algorithm using some new notation. This notation will help us a lot when we're exploring the on time on space solution and the on time o1 space solution. Now, this video will only cover the on squared time solution as well as the on time on space solution. Part 3 will cover the on time o1 space solution. So if you're looking for that solution, then feel free to skip to part 3. Although I do recommend that you watch this part as I will use a lot of the notations from this video in part three. All right, so let's get started. So here's the algorithm we stopped at in the last video. I mentioned that we can take for each index i, the maximum building to its left from index one to i minus one, and the maximum index on its right from index i plus one to n, then take the minimum of those maximums and calculate the water at building i. However, this is not quite true. For example, let's take the eighth index. You can see that the maximum to its left is two and the maximum to its right is two. Taking the minimum of both, you get two. So two minus the height of the building would give you negative one or negative water. This is not good, as I'm sure you see why the concept of negative water doesn't really make any sense. So a quick fix to this is to change the i minus 1 and i plus 1 in the algorithm to be i. That way I can also include the ith building in the height, and so simply changing the old algorithm to this new algorithm makes our new algorithm 100% correct for all test cases. Okay, great. Now I want to define some notation that would make it a bit easier to describe this algorithm. I'm going to use h1 to i to denote the subarray of the elevation map h from index 1 to i. So this includes element h1, h2, all the way to hi. I'm also going to denote maximum of h1 to i as the maximum of h1, h2, all the way to hi. Similarly, I'm going to denote hi to n as the subarray of h that includes elements hi, hi plus 1, all the way to hn. And again, the maximum of hi to n denotes the maximum of hi, hi plus 1, all the way to hn. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. Now I'm going to rewrite the algorithm we wrote earlier in terms of this notation. I will skip Lmax and Rmax altogether, and I'm just going to write the water and building i expression in a very elegant form using this notation, which is the minimum of the two maximums. The first maximum is the maximum of h1 to hi, and the second maximum is the maximum of hi to hn. Simple enough. This is just rewriting the old algorithm. Now the reason why I introduced this notation and rewrote the algorithm in this way is because oftentimes when you're solving problems such as this one, seeing a min-max or a max-min operation often helps you to apply a ton of cool tricks to speed up your solution. I'm going to have another video which is entirely dedicated to min-max and max-min operations but for now, just know that when you see a min-max or a max-min, there is often very, very cool speed-up tricks to optimize your solution. In fact, if you look at our algorithm right now, the only hard thing about it is evaluating the water and building i expression. This helps me step back from the algorithm and focus on my next target in solving this problem. Oftentimes, when I write pseudocode, I like to separate parts which I think are going to take the most of my thought and think about it abstractly. Once I've solved these smaller parts, I finally combine them into a solution to the original problem. So if you think long enough, 
you would find that the main hurdle for solving this problem is essentially this. Given an elevation map h, how do we calculate the function g of i, which is equal to the minimum of two maximums, the left maximum of h1 to i and the right maximum h i to n for i equals 1, 2, 3 all the way to n. One possible solution you might think of is to use the definition of gi that you're given. You can loop from i equals 1 to n, then for each i, first calculate the maximum of h1 to hi. You do this by initializing a max variable to 0, which is the smallest value possible in h, then looping a variable j from 1 to i and taking the maximum of all the elements as you go along. Then you can do the same thing for r max, but by looping j from i to n. This would give you the maximum on your left and the maximum on your right at the building i. All you have to do to find g is to take the minimum of both of these maximums and you're done. Although this is straightforward, the solution does take O of n squared time, as you have two nested loops, which are O of n time each. Now, one of our problems is finding L max and R max at any index i. Unfortunately, it takes O of n time for each index i, which is just too slow, especially when we do it as a nested loop. One very useful way of optimizing algorithms is the idea of pre-computing. Before we start the main algorithm, can we pre-compute some values that can help us in a later stage of the algorithm? If we can somehow pre-compute Lmax and Rmax before entering the algorithm in an array, then we can bring down the complexity of the algorithm to O of n time and O of n space. Think about the algorithm as this. We will first do some pre-computing on H to calculate two arrays, left max, which is of size n, and right max, which is of size n. Left max i will store the maximum of h1 to hi, and right max i will store the maximum of hi all the way to hn. But then, this now gives us a new problem to chase. Given an array h1 to n, how do we calculate left max i, which is the maximum of h1 to hi for i equals 1 to n, and right max i, both in O of n time? Let's take an example and try to figure it out. Suppose h has four numbers a1, a2, a3, and a4. Let's first write the definition of left max i. Left max 1 is just the maximum of the first number, a1. Left max 2 is the maximum of a1 and a2. Left max 3 is the maximum of a1, a2, and a3, and so on. Similarly, right max 4 is the maximum of a4, right max 3 is the maximum of a3 and a4, and so on. Now, take a minute and think about how these values in left max and the values in right max are related. If you spend enough time, I'm sure you would notice the pattern. So how does this translate into pseudocode? Well, for left max, start by defining left max 1 as h1. Then do a loop from i equals 2 to i equals n, and set left max i as the maximum of left max i minus 1 and hi, using the pattern that we observed. Repeat this process, and you'll eventually fill in the left max table in O of n time. You can also do the same thing for right max, but instead you loop in reverse, starting from 
n minus 1 and going down to 1. All right, this is great. We have now shown that the solution to this question about pre-computing, which going back gives us a solution to our original algorithm. Simply pre-compute left max and right max using the same technique we just showed. This takes O of n time for the pre-computing, and then loop from i equals 1 to n, and use the left max and right max values to calculate the water and building i expression. Since left max and right max both occupy O of n extra space, you have O of n extra space overall for your algorithm. And we're done. Thank you for watching the video. If you've enjoyed, please consider liking the video and subscribing for more videos. Also, if you're feeling rather generous, I will leave a link to my Patreon in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in part 3, which is the final part of this series.